Hi there, I'm Alice, owner of Fabric Ninja, and I wanted to help you out with one of my patterns. The Lilla Baby bib pattern seems to be confusing people a little bit, so let me help you out. Here are all the pieces for a Lilla Baby bib. This one is a long, short style, or has both the A and the B pattern pieces. Think of it like a mullet. Long in the back, short in the front. For this one, we'll refer to the pieces as, this is the inside, this is Zorb, Z-O-R-B. It's made by Wazoodle, and it's really, really absorbent. It absorbs 10 times its weight in water and is often used for cloth diapers. I really love this product. So this is going to go inside. You're never going to see it. Then we have our lining and our fashion fabric. Because the bib is reversible, your lining and your fashion fabric are really more like side one and side two. Either one can be the right side. What I'm going to do next is show you how to actually clip everything before you put it together. You can see the top of the Zorb. Let me turn it over so you can actually see the seam line. I did it in red so you can see it. All of that is seam allowance along the top, and we're going to actually cut all the seam allowance off only on the Zorb, not the other layers. Zorb is really bulky, and that'll make the whole thing fit much better. On our other pieces, you have seam allowance up here, and it doesn't have to be trimmed off, but it does need to be notched so that it sits better. So I'll come back in a moment and show you what that looks like. So here we have all the pieces again. First, let's look at the piece of Zorb. I've taken all the seam allowance off. So I've trimmed it right, right down to that stitching line. It's super close to the stitch line. On the other pieces though, you can see right here on the purple one probably best. I have done half of it notched. So the left side has V notches in the top and the right side does not. So what you, I would need to do is complete this one by putting those V's in the rest of the side. You might be a bit curious. Hey Alice, why on earth do I have to cut V's in the top of my piece? Well, it has to do with the fact that it's a convex curve on the bottom or it curves outward. On the side here is concave, so it curves inward. And here it curves outward, so it's convex. On convex edges, we do V's. On concave edges, we clip inward or do lines. And we're going to be doing those along the edge here once we sew that. Okay, it's now time to stack all of our layers. First, we have our Zorb which is the inside. You're never gonna see it once it's together. We're gonna kind of push it open because everything is going to stack on top of this pushed open piece. Next up, we're gonna put down, now let's do the brown layer. doesn't really matter. So the brown layer is going to go with its right side up. And next, the purple layer is going to go, oh, if you want to see what that said, it has Maribel written on there. It's going to go the right side down. Now, obviously, I can't really line everything up one-handed, but I will come back in just a moment, and you can see what it looks like. Okay, everything is all layered now. So we have our top layer, our fashion fabric, which is right sides together with our lining. And then inside that, or underneath that, that is, is our Zorb. So we have all of these layers ready to go. What you need to do before you sew is to match right up here. So we have those seams there. And you should either have these two ends ironed open, which means the seam allowance would be pressed 
open or flat or you can make your seam allowances one go one way and one go the other and you match those seam, uh, seam lines up right on top of each other and stick pins on there and then you're ready to sew that is unless you want to put tabs on it I'm gonna grab the tabs and show you exactly where they go A tab closure would be an option if you don't want to sew the sides shut. I think sewing the edges gives you a much better fit. However, tabs are easier for somebody who doesn't want to hand sew or wants to be able to take the bib off without unbuckling the headrest. Obviously, the buckles are pretty simple to undo, but everyone has their own preferences, so I give you options. So to put the tabs in, here are my tabs right here. They, um, there's one of each. So they're both this on this side. And they're both this on the other side. And they're actually one of each side. So it kind of curves down this way and curves down that way. So they are mirror images of each other is what I'm saying. And I'm going to open up here. And... The curved edge actually goes right around the edge of the bib there. And you can see that the brown side of my tab is to the brown side of the bib. So it goes right around the corner. There, it should fit right in. If you look at your pattern piece, there is a little outline to show you exactly where the tab goes. So this one over on this side, right around that corner. And then I would pin every I would pin my tabs into place. Then put this layer back down. Pin that into place. And next up I'm going to sew. I'm going to start here. So over, up the edge, the side, around, round, round down along the edge and then I'm going to stop so there's going to be a spot between here and here that's open that is where you're going to turn the whole thing back right side out so now we have all the layers sewn together your tabs are actually inside right here and right here on the other side I just want to make sure you're clear it's just the Zorb right now and all my extra thread. And down here at the bottom, this is loose thread. So this is an opening. This is where it's all going to be turned out of. You may be a little curious about my corners. Why is there this weird flip going on? Let me get closer to one of them for you. As I am sewing, I actually sew off of one edge. I turn my whole project and then as I'm sewing onto the next edge, I flip the seam allowance down and I sew straight across it. This gives me really crisp, clean corners when I'm getting ready to turn it. So from this point, your next step is you need to trim the zorb or your inner absorbent layer of fabric out from all of the seam allowances. I use these crazy scissors. These are called applique scissors. Mine are from Ginger. I really love them. And it allows me to lay flat on the fabric and get really, really close to things. I'll be back in a moment with everything trimmed. I just got done with trimming the absorbent layer out of all of the seams. So I trimmed it right down to that seam allowance. As close as you can get without actually going through it. Remember we did that triangle notching at the top? Here we're going to actually slice right into our corner. So all the way in, but not quite to the seam allowance. Watch my one-handed cutting. This is exciting. Trimming my corners is cutting diagonally. 
across my corner. If I didn't have this other piece folded in here, it would be a big square corner to cut off diagonally. I'll do that and come right back. Okay, everything's been trimmed. Next, it's time to flip it. Flipping is also called birthing. It's a term that quilters use a lot, so they are birthing their quilts. So you're gonna reach your hand right down here where we have that gap in between those two layers. I leave kind of a small hole. It's okay to make your hole bigger. And you're gonna reach inside, pushing this other end towards there and pull it straight through. It's always best to reach to the far end and then pull that end through. It's better than trying to take these close ends out first. It makes it harder. I'll get it halfway through and then I'll show you a picture of what it looks like. Here we have it half out of the hole. You're just kind of pulling it out of there slowly. Here it is almost all the way turned. Just a little bit to go. Okay, everything is turned right side out now. This is the lining and here's our fashion fabric. We have the tab pieces that go around the edge. Let me flip it over so you can see that there. So when this is on your little baby, when you wear the headrest down, it actually folds downward to the outside. The last step that you need to do is the top stitching. So go ahead to your iron, you're gonna press all of this nice super flat. Use a pin or a little stick, like a chopstick or a seam ripper to get these corners nice and pointy. Get them nice and clean looking. And then you have this bottom hole here to work with. Tuck everything to the inside as you're ironing and iron it nice and flat there make things easier. I like to use a product like this to hold those two layers together. You can also use stitch witchery and that makes it really really easy to do my top stitching later. I prefer with top stitching to just go along here and just not worry about the tabs. The tabs will take care of themselves once you have a snap on the, ins on the side here. You're not really going to have a problem with them wiggling in or not looking crisp later on. I hope this has helped you make your Lilla Baby bib. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. The Ninja at FabricNinja.com